You're listening to the Christian Indie Artists and Songwriters Podcast, the place where faith, music, and life intersect. We exist to help Christian indie artists and songwriters just like you get songs heard. Hey, I'm here with my friend Sammy Nino coming to us live from New York. How's it going this morning, Sammy? Hey, hey. Good morning, Brian. How's it going? Man, uh, I've been following your journey and uh, listening to your your music for a while, and I'm just so excited to have you on. I know you're going to have so much um, value and encouragement to our audience today. So, you know, with that in mind, how did you get started in music for the first place? Like, where did it all kind of begin for you? Yeah, absolutely. First, thank you for saying that, man. That that's encouraging for me uh, that you're listening, and um, you know, I feel like what I put out is the best I can offer the world mm. at the at this very moment in my life. I appreciate it, man. I got started in music kind of like every normal kid. Uh, started playing in band in high in middle school and high school. I'm a guitar player now, but my first instrument is something totally unrelated to guitar, and it was um, baritone horn. To put it into context, it's like a small tuba but in the same register as a trombone. Went through that route. Uh, I actually got pretty good at it. Got to like the most like accolades you can get in like in high school playing an instrument. But then guitar came into my life and oh boy. and it took over and I became yeah. a rebel. <laughs> the woodwinds to the strings, but not the not the violins, the steel strings. That's right. The rock <laughs> strings. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, and that, that's how it kind of started. Uh, there was one defining moment during that season where I was I was playing that euphonium that uh, baritone horn it was like kind of like the right it was like the planets aligned in that moment I was in class and we were playing this beautiful song called uh, death and transfiguration by Strauss and um, I don't know what happened maybe I was in my feels that day but we got to this one climax of the song and I felt my whole body get goosebumps um, I felt like I was like out of my body and um, it was like it was like that defining moment that I was like, this music thing, whatever I'm feeling right now, I want to pursue that for the rest of my life. And that's what I told myself. At, what was that like, sixteen, seventeen? And then of course that that powerful feeling that music can can provide. Um, and then at that moment, my faith journey, uh, growing up as a youth, uh, kind of intertwined. And that's really how I kind of got started with writing songs and um, and kind of pursuing this in a in a way where I can serve God as well. You know, I I often think like that's God's intention of music is it's like you know the world can do whatever it wants with it, but like at the end of the day, like there's so many references of praise in the Bible. Like music is an important part of existence, but like when you take the power of like the emotional power that music is, and then you combine it with like the truth of God's purpose. It's like, it literally is like a superpower and there's, there's nothing mm-hmm. like it. And that's why it defines all barriers. Like everybody can groove to a song. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from because music has a power unlike anything else. So uh, man, that's really cool that you had that experience and, and it stuck with you and really defined your whole life. So, you know, yeah. with that in mind, like, how did you kind of go from that moment and then chasing that moment and songwriting, but then like to where you started to want to put songs out there? And, you know, we talked earlier, like your role is like in the church world and like, how did all that kind of come to take shape where music actually became like your, your career path? Yeah. Um, I, I kind of knew my senior year of high school that I wanted to pursue songwriting. I was all set and ready to go to a Berkeley College of Music wow. um, with the plan of like doing it two years and then dropping out because I I, I was also <laughs> a, a big like John Mayer fan. So I was like, that's what I got to do because that's what he did. He dropped out. It worked for John, years. worked for me. <laughs> exactly. Um, but so, so I had an audition and I got accepted. I had received like a small scholarship and I was like so excited because that was like everything I wanted. Um, but I felt God kind of put like a, a pause, like a stop sign in front of me. Hmm. And he was like, you know, Sammy, if you go to Boston uh, to do that, you're not going to be the type of person that I made you to be. Wow. And um, that was kind of profound. And that season taught me like to be humble and just taught me, taught me really to have a servant heart because I kind of really stayed to just be faithful to my local church and, and to kind of just continue to be with my mom. And so that was a tough season, but I knew that I wanted to pursue songwriting. Um, but I, I didn't know that it could be this kind of lifestyle, this kind of, um, having this kind of perspective and mentality 
of being a songwriter, being an artist that that music grind till much later on. I just loved writing songs and and I had I still have my little composition notebook of all like all my writings. And then I kind of just followed that wave. I just wrote songs. I, I performed in church. I led worship in church. Um, and then there was there was a moment in church where I was kind of getting a little not not bored of the songs because there's so many so, so many worship songs that I like. Uh, but specifically fast songs, which, and I, you know, as a worship leader, it's, it's kind of like always harder to find good fast songs to lead worship in. So uh, it was like in that moment where I was like, you know, I want to, I want to just write songs that move me. And I feel that connect me with God, but that will also like kind of change things up a bit, be a little different. Um, and, and, you know, just try and do something different. And from that moment, that's where I was kind of like pursuing my heart and for like CCM uh, kind of style writing where it's like. I can I can preach the gospel or I can sing about like these universal truths, um, but also I can add my own musical flair to it that I love so much from all my influences of like mainly like guitar players and man that, that I mean that's huge especially you know if you were you're probably 17, 18 years old and yeah. you get your dream scenario where you get Berk. I mean, Berkeley is like world renowned. Yeah. Like you said, John Mayer comes out of there and like so many countless others that we don't even know. They're just like incredible musicians. And then for you to be obedient to God's calling and stop, like you said, stop sign. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal because so many of us, you know, may not be able to take that answer and, and, actually be obedient to it that's incredible and i'm sure that because of what you're able to do now and probably the countless amounts of blessings that have popped up along the way since then Hmm. it's all due to that obedience you know back then so i'm sure you have lots of other opportunities to be obedient along the way as we all can make the choice and i you know i feel like god always kind of shows me like we can choose faith or not Hmm. but like we have the opportunity and when we choose faith like our faith grows. And then the next time we might get a bigger opportunity to choose faith over not, you know, but like God's not, that's what grace is. God's not mad at us. If we, if you, if you would have gone through with Berkeley, it wouldn't be like, okay, God wouldn't turn his back on you. He loves you just as much, you know, but because you chose faith over not, he, he's blessing you along the way. So, so with that, you know, like, I mean, I've heard a couple of your songs out on Spotify, like, what was that process like from even from like writing to recording? Like, you know, this is the Christian indie artists and songwriters podcast. So everybody listening is most likely writing songs and trying to get them out there. So like, what was that journey like from you, from these songs that you had, you've been writing for a long time, but like how you selected the ones you did and how you record and the whole, the whole process of that getting songs out there. Yeah. That's a great question. That's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm here to load up the questions and just enjoy the answers. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that that was a great. Uh, so I came out before the the name of the game was release singles until like you got traction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was still young, so I came out with a like an eight song album. I got to a point where I had these handful of songs that I was like, okay, I, I like singing these. They they feel complete from like A to B. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and it was like the next challenge for myself on my musical journey, like. All right, now let's let's put it on tape. Let's let's record these songs and, and see how they feel. Um, thankfully, at that time, I was picking up um, my my production chops and recording. Um, nowhere near where I am now, but thankfully, I, I had like a foundation, and I just started demoing them down, like these little versions of them. And once I had once I had a complete, I was like, okay. Um, I I looked up what, what local studios were in my area. Um, Long Island doesn't have that many, uh, but there are a few hidden gems that, that are awesome. Hmm. So I, I was ready. I, I I was ready with these songs because I had, um, my, my demos ready and I I knew exactly what I wanted. And that was very important at the time because I had, you had a budget, you know, I, uh, I was working, a nine to five and then doing a lot of freelance stuff in order to afford this. And I kind of, rec- I kind of recorded the album as I kept working. So I, I didn't, I w- didn't do it all at once. Yeah. Um, and these, these beautiful little eight songs were, were, were created in, in a studio called Vo- Voodoo Studios um, in here in Port Jefferson. Uh, it's a pretty creative name. It's Voodoo as in the V U D U meter Voodoo. Uh- 
Ah, cool. Uh, yeah. Um, nice little studio. But looking back at it now, it, it was it was like a more like a hard rock metal studio. So mm. um, definitely not the sound that I am now. Uh, yeah. But they were. It's it's my baby. It's it's the starter pack. It's the it's the beginning of 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 my journey, and I'm so proud of it. Mm. Um, but that was it was hard because I had to. It was self self funded. Um, I did kickstarters. I did um, uh, like I hosted little cafe nights in order to fundraise to to do this. And uh, the beautiful thing as well is you you find out that people love believing and supporting other people that are chasing their dreams. So there was a whole community that came around me and kind of supported me in that journey. And, and that was like another thing that was, a that was a, a blessing in that time. I love that. The, you know, hustle aspect is, is there, oh, yeah. you know, just, you got to make it work, you know, but not, but still all the while, you know, doing it for the Lord. So, so once you got those eight songs, you know, you finally made it through that process and you loved them. And so after that, you know, what did you do with those eight songs? Was that a streaming thing? And did you start like touring? Like what, what was the result of those eight songs? Yeah. So this, this was a great learning experience for me because at the time I was like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta print these, uh, yeah. into album format and then sell them because mm -hmm. at that time I didn't know that music, the kind of music side was changing. So if anyone wants a CD, I still have a few, um, <laughs> <laughs> So so I printed I printed out like like a thousand albums. I mean I I ended up using CD Baby kind of to put it on on iTunes um, and then on on Spotify and things like that. But um, that was that was kind of the learning curve for me. And I and I told myself, you know what? I I don't think I'm gonna as much as I would love to uh, have like physical CDs at, to sell like at shows and things like that. Um, I don't think that's something I would choose to invest in again. Mm. At least not now in this time, maybe in the future where there's more demand for it. Um, but I, I went on CD Baby. I, I just Googled how do you put on songs uh, on Spotify and iTunes. And, and thankfully today it's like so much easier. Yeah. Uh, there's so many services to do that. Um, and I think this, I think distro kid does it and like puts it up in like two days or three days now. And then that experience with uh, releasing it and then um, just kind of learning how to organize yourself because there's not just releasing the song, it's creating content for it, creating a marketing plan, um, creating like a like a, a tour to kind of promote the album. And so it's it's like, although music is so beautiful and it's so uh, such an expression of who we are, it's also it also has work. So it forced me to grow, kind of like put my business hat on, my my mm -hmm. boss hat on, and. Um, and I'm thankful for that because those are those are skills that I would have never had if I would have never had to promote myself. Yeah, man. I mean, like the music business, the music industry means that there's it's more than just a creative aspect. And I feel like that's something that, you know, it's hard for for a lot of us because we want to create, you know, we have these songs inside and like we get to birth them and make them a reality, you know, from our heads to our ears, I guess, yeah. and hopefully others ears, you know, but like. Yeah, once the song is done, then I like the work is half over. Maybe you know, like that's where it, r it really changes. And and a lot of people, you know, like sometimes that's where it, it could end. You know, because too, like when I, I made a few, we did a few projects when I was on staff of the church. Um, and CD Baby, same deal. This is like 2015 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I we put them out there, and I was like, okay, they have like exactly seven streams from me. You know, like. <laughs> Like, cause nobody knows about them. And now in 2015, I mean, they would probably have been so much easier to get traction back then because like there wasn't 40,000 songs uploaded a day to Spotify. It was still like a newer thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So like, so like what kind of stuff? Cause I mean, I, I definitely geek out about the marketing side. So what kind of things like strategy wise, did you bring in any team to help you? Like, what was the stuff you started to do? Cause I've seen like now, like you're killing it in the marketing aspect. Like, you know, what kind of stuff did you learn along the way to get those songs out there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the the silliest one I tried was uh, I would just tell my friends that when they go to bed, put your phone on mute, but leave it playing on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that it's like, it takes a little bit of work, but it's just logical. Like you want, at, at an early time, I was like, I want people to see my name as much as possible. Not so that, you know, I can 
so that they can see me, but it's more of like a visual tool. Like, cause the mm. more you see something, the more it gets like implanted in your mind. Yeah. Um, so, and, and my, the way I, I put my artist name was, was very like thought out, uh, which is just my, it's my nickname, Sammy. Cause my, my, my real name is Sam Samuel. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just put Sammy Nino, which is, and I thought about this. I was like, okay, I need the first syllable, my name to be one syllable. And then my last name to be two syllables. Um, right. even like just little thoughts like that. Um, because I wanted, I wanted that phrase, Sammy Nino to get stuck in people's head. And so that would, anything I put out, like I would either have my name or my logo on a picture, um, or a video, um, or I, I just keep reposting and posting things that kind of had my name hidden there because I was trying to build that brand. Um, and I'm still kind of doing that, but I'm seeing it worked because now all my friends and everyone I see, they call they any anytime they see me, it's not like, oh hey Sam or hey Samuel. They say, Hey Sammy Nino. And it's it's <laughs> kind of funny, it's kind of Love weird, it. but it kind of yeah. worked. Yeah. Um and then there's uh you want, you know, nowadays, and, and I find this too, like there's so much content on the internet and on our on our phones that it gets a little overwhelming and a little overbearing. Mm. So I try not to just make the content um about me, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. I want to somehow in it find a way to give value to people, whether it's a a thought, a prayer I'm I'm expressing, um, or like i I'm a very silly guy, so I love the idea that anything that I put out will make someone laugh and just make their day a little brighter. Yeah. Um, so I try and implement that into my content. And there's just different marketing tools, you know, uh, you and me have a connection with, with full circle, which, which is mm-hmm. another thing we can talk about. Uh, yeah. Uh, something beautiful that they inspired me in such a way, but they, they taught me the, uh, the whole email list thing mm. and how important it was to uh, get people's emails because that's the one thing that you actually own uh, because you don't own your Instagram followers. One day Instagram can decide to shut down and then boom, there's your there's your whole platform. So when I would do live shows, uh, which was uh, either local churches or, you know, I, I dare to say it. I, I would put myself in situations to play like at bars um, sure. or different open mics because, you know, as you and me as someone who believes those are like the best moments to kind of share your faith and spread the gospel in those in those situations. Um I have like a little list and I would ask people, Hey, can you, you want to, can you write your email? Like if they were buying merch or something that way I had archived their email. Um, and then now and today I still have those people's emails and, and through MailChimp, I, anytime I have a new video out, um, anytime I'm promoting like a merch thing, um, and I'm, I'm still developing it and, and finding creative ways, but that's, that's definitely one way that helps and people respond. That's huge. And I'm right there with you with MailChimp and I know, yeah, through full circle and through, you know, a lot of other smart people that are way smarter than me. Like that's the thing is email addresses is something that like, it's so valuable because it's your own audience that actually cares the most about what you're doing instead of just being, you know, that maybe that one or that 10% that Instagram might show your post to, if you're lucky, yeah. you know, like a hundred percent of your emails list, you know, for the most part, get all of your messages. So they're the, and they're the ones that are the most likely to take action too. So yeah, I love that. And that's, that's a great strategy. And I know a lot of people have asked about that email stuff. So like, I mean, I know you just mentioned a couple of things, but like, what are some other approaches that you've had to the email list? Like, you know, like you said, so you're sending them like bonus videos or like specific content, or are you kind of sharing your, all your content and then also pushing it to email address. Like how do you, how have you, what are some ideas and thoughts that you put into that to make it kind of a special experience to keep gr- and And also too, I know this is another aspect, but like other than just get people to write it down at shows, like have you done other ways to try to gain email lists like on, on the internet? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I, whoever's like on my email list, I, I kind of, they're VIP. So they get okay. first dibs at any content. Um, they get sneak peeks. Um, they get like my honest thoughts. Uh, you know, if because the, the people who subscribe to you are the people that want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Um, there's there's different tools that I'm I'm actually looking to implement this year. I mean, there's a few things. Uh, you know, there's giveaways. You know, like if you have a little bit of money to invest in like Apple Apple AirPods or something like that. I've seen people do that. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, sign up to my email list and we'll, we'll select the winner from there. Those are all just tools. Like, like no one wants to give you a free, <laughs> free yeah. anything. Those are all just right. awesome tools. I mean, if and it's like an exchange, you know, I give you opportunity for value, you know, give me your email list. Yeah. Um, uh, but th- there's there's areas that I can work with, uh, and and that's like one thing I want to encourage you people with. Um, it may seem like a daunting task because you may have zero people right now, or you may have five people, and it's like, oh, it's so much work to try and get that. <laughs> but yeah, the work like this this stuff takes work, and and it's and it's a journey. It's not a race, mm. so you got to be in it for the long run. And I just want people to take their time, you know, enjoy it. Um, and just be in it for the long run, like because if if you really love it, then you would be doing it regardless if anyone was listening. You know, we always say, my wife and I, we have to walk the race. Mm. You know, like it's it's a long haul. And yeah, I mean, you said it exactly. The, I, I agree with you so much in that. Like, if no one cared and there was no one else, you would still do it. Yeah, you know. And I feel like I feel like the reason is is because that's what God made you to do. Mm. Because like what else? Like what else is passion? Like what I feel like passion is purpose, you know, like and I feel like we all start just like you said, you know, we all start off in band or we all start off, you know, I start off playing Green Day songs on bass when I was like 12, 14 <laughs> years old. Nice. And like but that passion is the same today. It's not like it it of course it grows, yeah. but like whatever that fire is that made me pick up and like made my fingers hurt so bad playing and mm. same thing for you. Like, you know, all those hours you put into playing band and then guitar, like the passion's the same right now. And I feel like that's that's the sustainability that God gives to us. And it's the people who can take that passion and figure out how to lay it out. And too, like you said, like patience. Like I always say that patience plus perseverance equals success. Oof. Like, are you cool to wait? when it's not fun? Are you cool to push through when it's boring or it's not exciting? Because if you are equal success, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and I feel like that's what I'm hearing from you. Exactly. Like you just keep trying things, but you're willing to wait it out. You're willing to say, okay, you know, it's like, like the full circle thing, dare to suck, you know, like, like it might not work and that's okay, but you keep going. And I mean, I feel like you just, you just said it, but like, is there any like, other wisdom or info that you picked up along the way that you would encourage your younger self kind of as you were getting started maybe and making those decisions that you could pass along to everyone listening? Oh, yeah. Uh, something that's kind of fresh that, that's that been in this season of my life. I was getting ready for bed, me and my wife, and it was it was a release day and, and I'll, I'll be vulnerable. You know, I'm all about being honest with you guys. Um, yeah. It was release day and your release days, you're excited because you're, you know, you you're expecting for people to hear it and, and receive it. Um, but there's also the other end where people give feedback or, or, and, and, and you see your numbers on Spotify and on Apple music. And that's another kind of tool that you use to measure your uh, I'm, I'm putting quotations in the air right now, your success yeah. for that day. Yeah. So I found myself emotional that night because I was, I was so proud of the song. The, the song that we just released uh, remains the same. I was so proud of it because because I did all the production on it. Like I, I mixed it, I mastered it, I did all the songs, and there was nice. Everyone everyone received it well. But here here's the thing: throughout the years, we have an inner voice in our in ourselves. We have an inner voice in our mind, and it talks to us, and it and it and it and it's looking at us, and it's telling us things, and a lot of times on this creative journey where we don't see the exact results that we have in our mind, the expectation that we have because we're, we're comparing it to someone else. You mm-hmm. tell yourself these things that aren't like really, you're not really nice to yourself. You're like, ah, maybe I'm not that good enough or, you know, maybe I should mm-hmm. just stop because no one really cares. No one listens. And I oh. felt God talking to me, ministering to me at night. And it was totally out of the blue. And I, and I started like crying. I started breaking down. And I, and I heard, mm. I felt God say like, Sammy, you have to unlearn all of the things you told yourself over these years. And then, wow. um, and then my mind went to uh, John, I think it's John chapter 12, where it talks about how we're, we're children of God. At the end of the day, you have to see that the perspective that God has of you is totally different than the perspective you have of yourself. And mm. God has such a bigger view and an eternal perspective. And 
he sees us as his children and, 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 and we are so loved by him. And we see ourselves as these insecure, sometimes, sometimes okay, sometimes not okay people. I think at the end of the day, you just got to be nicer to yourself and be more patient with yourself. Just practice a little more love on yourself because it's easy to love other people. But when you disregard yourself over time, that becomes a weight and a burden. And a lot of times, if you don't take care of that mental side in your in your mind, then you'll burn out. That's kind of been the, the big thing for me. It's like, just start saying positive things in your inner voice because over time you're going to see that that's going to encourage you even more and and give you a little more strength to kind of push through hard hard moments that's so good and and two things you brought up one is a funny thing that now god calls you sammy also so (laughs) god's got the name down too which is awesome and two (laughs) and more i spammed him with marketing (laughs) but you know what god opens all our emails let's be honest that's right (laughs) because he hears all our prayers so he opens all our emails so it's fine (laughs) god doesn't leave us unread that's the name of the episode yeah (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) but uh i was thinking about ministry man i mean when we're you know you know you're in that capacity like we are called and it's literally our job to love our team and not that it's we're not loving them only because of that reason but like who do we forget to love along the way is ourselves because we don't have a lot left to give sometimes some seasons are better than easier than others but like of course dude i love that that whole idea of like remember how much god loves us like i just i'm doing this um this bible plan right now called visioneering it's Mm. it's on um the Bible app, Andy Stanley. And like, he was saying like, God doesn't see spiritual or non-spiritual things. Cause you know, a lot of times as Christians, we say like, I don't want to over-spiritualize it, you know, but like, and like, that's something we all say and and totally understand what that means. However, like what he's saying is like, God doesn't see us as we're all spiritual to God. Yeah. He sees it all, you know, in the same way that he said, I don't know if you should, he put the stop sign up for Berkeley. He gave you the green light to release that song. Yeah. That maybe your expectations weren't met at this point, but God's expectations were exceeded because you're taking that obedient step to actually do that song. You did it all yourself, you know, like all those skills, everything from writing to producing to mixing them. I mean, I know that's a lot of work to do that. Yeah, bro. And it sounds great. So you put a ton of effort and like, but to put that out there is such an obedient move. So yeah, the stats may not add up to our our mind frame all the time. Sometimes they totally get blown away. Like sometimes we're like, wow, really that happened, you know, Mm -hmm. but, but sometimes it doesn't. But at the same time, like what you said, like God, he's just looking for the yes. He's looking for choosing faith and putting ourselves out there and being vulnerable and saying, okay, God, like, I don't know what's going to happen with this, but like, you've called me to do it. So let's see what happens. And, and man, that's a powerful thing. And I know it's, it's, it can be simple, but like sometimes we overlook the simple things. Like there's that, there's that album from United Pursuit. I love so much called the simple gospel. Okay. Oh, oh, bro. Dude. And it's like <laughs> one of my favorite, I mean, there's this one song on there that literally was like the, the anthem for it, those seasons change your love remains. Oh like, my bro. Right. I'm on the floor you know. right now. I'm on the See? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and that it's something about that album is like, the gospel is simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Yeah. You know, it can be, but I think I know for me, I constantly overcomplicate and constantly add too much unnecessary tension to things when like, I love it, man. You just want to make people happy with your music, with your content and yeah. like be obedient. And like, you gotta, there's not, it's not like we are walking on sunshine all day long for sure. Yeah. You know, but if that's your aim, remind yourself that I'm loved and like, by the creator of all of it. So like, it's okay to love yourself and like, and like that. So that's so powerful. So thank you for sharing that, man. I mean, I think I, I know that people are encouraged. I'm encouraged by that. So I know others will be too. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's what we aim to do, man. I, just, just as you encouraged me, just as people encourage me along the journey, we just got to pass that baton. Um, I'm a strong mm-hmm. believer that your art at this very moment in time is exactly what it needs to be. So don't be afraid to put it out because whoever's going to hear it is is the person that needed to hear it. And at the end of the day, this art, this talent that God gives us in our hand does not belong to us. It's our responsibility to give it out to the world. Man, that's the mic drop moment right there. <laughs> Man, well, with that in mind, I know people are going to want to connect with you. So what's the best way? What social media platforms do you hang out? How can people find you? Yeah, I still use MySpace. Uh, no, cool, I'm man, kidding. me too. 
Uh, yeah, you could just type in Sammy Nino music. Uh, it'll be on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, that's 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 where you can find me. Yeah. Cool. And I'll link all that stuff in the description below and also Spotify and everything too. But uh, before we go, I'd love to pray over you and just uh, oh, seek, seek God in this moment. So God, thank you so much for Sammy. Thank you so much for him and his wife's partnership and this this music journey. God, thank you for his heart. Thank you for his uh, just his spirit of kindness and generosity that's just pouring out of him, God. Just thank you for his uh, example of obedience and faithfulness to follow after you, God. I just pray that he has uh, confidence and encouragement to to not only love himself, but love the people that have, have put you've put in front of him, God, and let that be the thing, because of all the things, God is love. So as he represents your love through all that he does, God, just let that just magnify and just elevate his platform, God, and just pray for uh, extra wisdom and creativity as he's continuing to, to plan and try to seek your face in all the ways that you want to reach the world through him and his music and talents, God. We just thank you for... For this time we've got to spend here together, God, I just pray that it encourages other the way that it's encouraged me in this moment, Lord. We just thank you. We love you. We give you all the praise. Your name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. We want to help reach as many Christian indie artists and songwriters as possible. And one way we can do that is with your help. So if you could take a minute and leave us a review on iTunes, that would be so appreciated. This is how the iTunes algorithm will push this content out to more and more Christian indie artists and songwriters. So like I said, if you could just take a couple seconds, leave us a review, that would be so awesome. It means so much to us and we would really appreciate it.